So the linearity of differentiation is a fancy over-the-top title for something that is actually extremely simple. So simple, in fact, that you're probably going to groan with boredom. So it is the fancy name for the fact that if you have two functions, f and g, that are both real-valued functions and they're defined on some subset of the real line, which, for simplicity, we've made the closed interval a, b, and they're both differentiable at some point p inside their shared domain, which is the interval a, b, then, if you construct the third function by taking a linear combination of the two functions, so lambda 1 and lambda 2 are some real numbers, constant real numbers, and then you've got lambda 1 f plus lambda 2 g, a linear combination of the two functions f and g, which yields a third function, then this third function, you can conclude, is also going to be differentiable at this point p, where both f and g were differentiable, and it will have derivative lambda 1 f prime plus lambda 2 g prime. So this is a fact that I'm sure you're familiar with from calculus, but in this video we're going to prove it with proper analytical rigour. But this is very simple, it's not going to take long. So really, the linearity of differentiation can be split into two separate theorems. The first, that if f is differentiable at a point p, then if you take a constant multiple of f, lambda f, this new function is also going to be differentiable at p and will have derivative lambda f prime. The second part is that if you have two functions f and g that are both differentiable at a point p, then if you add them together, the sum is going to be differentiable at point p and have derivative f prime plus g prime. If we prove these two separate little bits, then we will overall have this whole bit because if this is true, then lambda 1f and lambda 2g will both be differentiable at p because f and g are both differentiable at p, and then you'll have two functions that are both differentiable at p, lambda 1f and lambda 2g, so if you add them together by this second part, you'll then end up with something that's differentiable at p. So let's begin with the proof of this one. So we start with our function f that we know is differentiable at the point p, and we now want to show that a constant multiple of f, lambda times f, is also going to be differentiable at the point p. So if this is going to be differentiable at the point p, it means that this limit is going to have to exist. The limit as t approaches p of lambda times f of t minus lambda times f of p divided by t minus p. Now, by the algebra of limits, we can pull that constant multiple lambda out. So this is going to become lambda times the limit as t approaches p of f of t minus f of p over t minus p. And we know that this limit exists because the function f is differentiable at the point p. We know what this value is called as well. It's called the derivative of f at p, f prime at p. So therefore, we overall get that this is equal to lambda f prime. So this is going to be differentiable and it's going to have derivative lambda times f prime. Now let's do the proof of the second one. So we have our function f and g and we know both of them are differentiable at the point p. Now we want to prove that if we construct the third function f plus g that it's going to be differentiable at the point p. So it being differentiable at the point p means that this limit must exist. So the limit as t approaches p of f of t plus g of t, that's this function evaluated at t, minus the function evaluated at p which is minus f of p and then we're also going to have minus g of p here, all divided by t minus p. Now. Because we know f and g are differentiable at p, we know these two limits exist. The limit as t approaches p of f of t minus f of p divided by t minus p, and the limit as t approaches p of g of t minus g of p over t minus p. You can then combine these two together using the algebra of limits, and they have the same denominator, so you just combine the numerators and you'll notice that adding this to this yields this. So these two added together gives this. Therefore, this limit is going to exist, and it's going to equal the value of this limit plus the value of this limit. The value of this limit is f prime at p, the value of this limit is g prime at p. Therefore, the value of the derivative of our function f plus g at p is f prime plus g prime. So there we go, that's our proofs finished. This theorem is simple, but of course it's incredibly important. You use this fact all the time in calculus.